Hey Adnan, how are you? Hi teacher, I'm fine, and you? I'm doing well, thank you. Welcome to class this morning. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you again too. Thanks for joining us today. Um, okay, so we are going to be talking a little bit today about cooking, like we do every Tuesday morning. And um, we're going to be talking about something that I thought was really, really cool. Um, I had done a little bit of research online and I found out that you can make yogurt really easily at home just from milk and like a little bit of yogurt. And so I wanted to share uh, my experience with you guys and um, we can learn some new English vocabulary that's related to yogurt and there's something inside of yogurt called probiotics so we can learn about that today too. But um, I wanted to ask you guys, have you ever tried to make your own yogurt? It's so easy. No, no, never. I always um, bought um, yogurt in yeah. supermar supermarkets. Uh, uh, I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> nowadays I can't eat because of my allergies. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, since um, seven years ago, I um, I can't eat uh, anything related to milk. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And is it just cow milk that you have to avoid, or can you drink goat milk? Uh, uh, yes. Um, I I can I can't uh, drink uh, milk. Um, all products uh, related to to milk, uh, for example, uh, yogurt, uh, cheese, uh, uh, butter. Um, okay. Nowadays, I can eat uh, butter, but it uh, um, vegetable is uh, I don't know. Um, like uh, uh, yes, it's uh, margarine. Uh, um, of uh, maize, 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 I okay. don't know. So it's, maybe it's made from corn oil. Yes, yes. But uh, two months ago, <laughs> two months ago, I, I can't, I can't eat, um, I can't eat um, butter. Okay, okay. Well, yes. yeah, and you could, you could use that word in the past. You could say, uh, two years ago, I couldn't eat butter. Yeah. Um, because like when you say can't, it's like in the present tense. But when it was two years ago, you could say yeah. I, I couldn't or. Uh, okay, I okay, couldn't. okay. Ah, mm -hmm. I forgot. Thank you. No, it's okay. It's okay. No problem. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you're able to at least eat a little bit of butter now, even if it's like margarine. Okay. <laughs> um, and can you have goat milk or no milk at all? No, no milk at all. I in the morning I have uh, um, out uh, uh, without gluten, without gluten, mm -hmm. and um, uh, which uh, taste uh, to coffee, but uh, without caffeine and okay. with water. I mix uh, the the cereal uh, with water. Only and sugar, a bit sugar. Okay, and it tastes like coffee. Yeah. Hey, and sorry, did it tastes you... like coffee. It's like coffee, but it's not coffee. Oh, okay, is it taste, taste, taste? Uh, the flavor is like a coffee, but it's not coffee. Okay, okay. There's something like that that's here in Germany called Caro, like this Caro. I don't know if it's I, the same I, thing. No, but it's made no, from no. barley, which is like, it's kind of like wheat, barley, and um, also chicory, I think, is in it. So it has like barley and chicory, and it's like brown, and it comes in a powder, and you mix it with hot water, and people use it as an alternative to coffee. Yes, I suppose I it's, un it's something similar to, to us. Mm. Um, uh, I uh, before that I I um, 
I had a breakfast, uh, chicory, uh, yes, yes, uh -huh. uh, ch chicory, uh, ch chicory is what I, I drink uh, now. Okay, okay. Uh, before that, uh, it, wa it was a mix of uh, several cereals. Um, but uh, they they was uh, gluten. Um, oh, they have gluten. Yes, and nowadays uh, I am allergic okay. <laughs> gluten too. Okay. So uh, I have yeah. to I have to change um, my breakfast for chicory. Chicory. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, chicory is nice. It's really good. Yes. What's this Adnan too? Yeah. Adnan, have you tried chicory before? No, I, I don't know what, what is the uh, chicory. Okay, maybe we can ask Anna to explain it for us. Anna, can you tell Adnan what chicory is? Yes, I'll try. Okay. It's uh, like uh, Michelle uh, write down in the chat box is a uh, alternative uh, to coffee because uh, there are people who can who can uh, drink uh, coffee uh, because of the caffeine uh, because they feel uh, very excited and they they can't uh, sleep uh, very well. Or in my case, uh, for example, because I have a serious allergy, um, in this case, if I if I had uh, take coffee, I I wouldn't I wouldn't sleep at all uh, at night. Uh, this uh, is a cereal. Uh, uh, many times is a mix of uh, several cereals. Uh, for example, I don't know how to say in English. Is um, Malta, uh, avena, um, chicory, um, uh, cebada. Mm -hmm. uh, several cereals. E the, the taste is like uh, coffee, but no coffee. And uh, it doesn't have caffeine. Okay, nice. And I put the the English translation to that in the chat box. You could say okay, malt. Okay. Okay. And you can and avena in English is oatmeal or oh, okay. oats. It could be said as either. Um, but okay. When you eat it like as um, like in the morning when you heat it up with water. Um, when you heat up the oats with water and it's kind of like a thick, um, mushy cereal <laughs> and you eat it, it's yeah. called oatmeal. But um, sometimes when they're just used as an ingredient by themselves, they're called oats. Yes. Um, I, I have a question. Uh, gl uh, gluten in English, uh, how, how do you spell um, gluten? Gluten is G L U T E N. Ah, yes, it's the I mean, same. same it's, yeah. yeah, it's the same as in Spanish. Cool. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, and chicory is actually the root of this really pretty flower. Um, there are like these. It's this plant that has these blue fluffy flowers they're so pretty and they grow everywhere and it's actually the root of this plant that is dried and roasted so it gives it kind of the same taste as coffee because it's roasted but it's like you can tell a difference it's not exactly the same as coffee but it's still really good yes uh, so maybe uh, you can try it Adnan <laughs> in chicory, in chicory uh, the dust is uh, dark but when you mix uh, with uh, water, is black. It's yeah. Black. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, in in Spain, I I like to to tell a um, story. Okay. Go in ahead. <laughs> in Spain, <laughs> in Spain, uh, in the war, in the in the war, many many years ago. Uh, people who um, didn't have enough money to eat uh, coffee mm -hmm. normally uh, took uh, uh, chicory. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so is that when it became popular? In the 
In those times, and yes, uh, nowadays I think, in my opinion, is only used uh, for people like uh, me that have problem with uh, allergies or something like that. Uh, uh, because uh, chicory um, uh, doesn't have gluten. Yeah, so yeah, it might be more healthy than coffee. Um, okay, well, thank you for sharing your story with us. I appreciate it. And for talking a little bit about um, the alternatives that you found to help overcome your allergies with milk and gluten. It sounds like it's a little bit like complicated, but it's, it's nice that you're able to find a way to still have your coffee, even though it's chicory coffee. <laughs> So I wanted to talk a little bit now about how we can make yogurt because it's, I wanted to talk also about cookies after this. And if you guys have a, a recipe that you'd like to share, add on if you have a recipe that you really like, some kind of food that you really like, we can read the recipe together. And also Anna, if you have some kind of recipe that you'd like to share too. Um, but okay, so we're going to talk about how to make yogurt and also um, these famous cookies from the New York Times, a famous newspaper in the United States, they did this really interesting article. They did a lot of research trying to find the perfect cookie. And so we'll read a little bit of the article that they wrote about it. It's really interesting. And, um, and we'll, we'll look at the recipe too so you guys can maybe try that in the future. So um, first, I wanted to ask if you guys know the the names for these kinds of spoons. There's a big one and a little one. Do you guys know what these are called? Mm, I think uh, the other one it's called the uh, uh, coffee spoon maybe. Oh, it's close. A teaspoon. A teaspoon. Tea, teaspoon yes. Yeah, yeah tea. good job. And what's the big one called? Maybe food, food spoon, or mm, it has a Ooh, name thanks. though. There's a teaspoon, and Anna, do you know this? The big one, what it's called? Uh, sorry, teacher. Uh, I I have to to write down in my notebook. Okay. Some vocabulary. Sorry, can you repeat okay. the question? No, no problem. Okay, so in when you're cooking or even eating. Um, in the kitchen, you usually have two sizes of spoons. There's oh, a little okay. one and a big one. Yes. So these have names. Uh, for uh, for example, the the small the small spoon. I don't know other name, but uh, it is used for to in order to take a yogurt or coffee or something like that. And the the biggest um, is used for for, for uh, when you have lunch, for example, or soup. That's soup. Good. Yeah. So based on that, we can kind of think about it. So Adnan said that this one is it's like a coffee spoon, and um, the name for it in English is actually a teaspoon. Teaspoon. This one. A, a and so yeah, a teaspoon. Teaspoon. Mm -hmm. And then the big one is called a tablespoon because, like you said, you use it a lot, like at lunch or maybe when you have a soup or something really big that you have to eat. <laughs> so we have a teaspoon and a tablespoon. And many times we'll hear in a recipe, they'll say you need two teaspoons of sugar or a tablespoon of cinnamon. So, um, so you guys can know which one they're talking about when they're talking about them. So, uh, sorry, teacher. Uh, could you write down the, yes. the name, I'll write please? Yes, in the chat box, yeah. Okay, thank the you. The small one is, do you guys remember? The small one? Already here, it's a teaspoon, the small one. And then the large one is? Okay, okay, teaspoon. Mm -hmm. teaspoon and tablespoon. So when you want to make yogurt, um, you might be able to make this even with soy milk. I'm not sure. You might have to do some research on that online. But um, I've been using regular milk that comes in, uh, like a liter comes 
in like a package like this. And so um, I take a giant pot like this, a giant pot like you would use for making soup. And um, it's really great because it's, it has a heavy bottom uh, because you want to heat up the milk. And so you don't want the milk to burn. So try to get a heavy pot. Mm. And a heavy pot that has a lid. The top of the pot is called a lid. So, um, so you want to have a lid on your pot. <laughs> and um, so you just heat the milk until it's simmering. Do you guys remember what simmering means? We talked about this in an earlier class. Uh, yes, it's but kind of like boiling, but it's different. Yes, 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 yes. Do you know what boiling means? Yes, is when you cook. Uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. When you heat the water. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. And so when it starts to boil, what happens at the top of the water? Bubbles. Yeah, it gets lots of bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So there's a lot of movement when it's boiling. But when it's simmering, it's it's also heated, the liquid. Um, but the bubbles don't don't break the surface. The bubbles don't come to the top. And so you won't see a lot of movement, but it will still be hot. And so um, when you make yogurt, you have to take your heavy pan or your heavy pot and um, you have to heat the milk and for about half an hour, like 30 minutes. Okay, thank you, Anna. State or temperature just below the boiling point. So this would be before the bubbles are breaking the surface. Yes. Um, so you want to simmer your milk and you have to stir it constantly. I use a tablespoon actually to stir mine to make sure that the milk doesn't stick to the bottom. And so you cook the milk for about 30 minutes. A lot of the water will evaporate out, and this will help your yogurt to be thick, too, because um, it, it's more concentrated. And then um, once your, your milk has heated up, you take it off the, the burner. <laughs> the burner is on the top of the stove where you heat it, the element where you heat it. It's called the burner. So you take the pot off the burner <laughs> and you put it um, in a place where it can cool off and once it's it's still hot but um, almost room temperature um, you will take some yogurt that you have made before or you can buy some from the store like a little container and for one liter of milk I put about four tablespoons so um, so you take the yogurt and you you just stir it gently into the hot milk and um, and I put mine I just leave it right in the same pan that I, I cooked it in and I put it into the oven to try to keep the temperature stable and you leave it there overnight so maybe eight hours maybe ten hours and in the morning you go and you open the pot and it's so exciting like all of the milk has turned to yogurt and so you can spoon it into your containers and put it into the refrigerator. And I'll show you what it looks like. This is a yogurt. It's, it's really thick. And wow. um, yeah, it's, it's great. I'll show you maybe with a spoon, but then the spoon will get dirty. Ew. <laughs> but it's, it's like this. Yeah. Oh, nice. So it comes out really nice. I just made this yesterday. So um, I left it in the refrigerator. Um, you can leave it in the refrigerator for three hours before you eat it to make sure it's nice and cold. And it gets thicker, too, when it's in the refrigerator. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, really easy. You just have to heat the milk and add a little bit of yogurt, like four tablespoons, four big spoons. And, um, and then just leave it, you know, for a few hours and it becomes yogurt. So I was really excited to learn that it was so easy, and it's my new favorite thing. I'm, I'm making it every week now. So um, maybe you guys can try this. Do you think, Adnan, do you think you might try to make yogurt now? Mm. I'll try. <laughs> You'll try. Yeah, it's easy. And I'll give you a link to a website that gives you some instructions that are written down in English. So and how many... 
minutes uh, I will uh, leave the water on the oven or stove um, about 30 minutes 30 minutes mm -hmm. with the uh, with the long fire or short fire you want to have a low heat mm -hmm. low heat uh, for uh, 30, 30 minutes Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, or maybe a medium heat at first until it gets heated, and then you can turn it to low. And you want to use, my tablespoon has yogurt on it now, but you want to use your tablespoon and constantly move the milk and scrape the bottom to make sure the milk doesn't burn to the bottom of the pan uh, while, you're, while you're cooking it, because milk has a tendency to burn. <laughs> yeah, so... Adnan, maybe you can look at the recipe. I put the link in the in the chat box. Yeah. So and there are many many videos like on YouTube. A lot of people have made videos about um, making yogurt and how easy it is. So you guys can watch some of those videos maybe in English too. And Anna, would you try to make yogurt? Do you think with with soy milk or with another alternative? Anna, are you there? Yes, teacher. Uh, no, I, I, I don't have any alternative to, to it. My husband, however, uh, my husband uh, take uh, yogurt, um, but um, uh, with uh, chip, oveja, chip, sheep. Oh, sheep. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, uh, without lactose. Uh, lactosa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could say lactose-free. Yes. La lactose-free, uh, because um, he, he suffered from um, an allergy of, of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. my dad also has a lactose allergy. Uh, he he buy normally buy um, a yogurt um, organic organic uh, yogurt um, uh, made of uh, this kind of uh, milk and with, uh, lactose lactose free free <laughs> that's cool okay yeah. I, I I like to to try to do it but <laughs> I I think it's better for him to to buy because it's impossible uh, for me to to buy milk of of yeah. uh, cheap. Yeah, yes. sheep's milk is hard to find. <laughs> yes, I don't know where yes. you could buy milk from a sheep. No, no, it's difficult. It's difficult in this uh, in my region. It's yeah. uh, more common in the north uh, area to to oh, people uh, who own um, their own uh, farm. Um, animals, mm -hmm. but in this uh, area, it's difficult to to find this kind of milk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe yeah, maybe it's better than to try to buy the the yogurt already made. <laughs> yes. Just because it's it's really hard to find. But uh, I have I I have a question. Okay. You you may mm, the yogurt only with milk. You don't have to to mix with other yogurt. Oh yes, when you heat the milk after yes. it has cooled off to about room temperature, a little bit like you want it to still be warm. You add four tablespoons, four of these big spoons. Of um of like I try to save a little container, um it's like this big, <laughs> yes. and um of of the yogurt that I make I've just made it for two weeks now, but I save a little bit like this much, um from the batch and then I use that and I add it to the milk to make the new batch the next week. Okay, okay, maybe because I I understand because uh, this um, in Spain um, there have been um, items that made uh, yogurt um, 
um, something told me that uh, you have to mix a yogurt when when you try to make uh, nasal yogurt for your yeah. own on on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And do you know why? Do you know why you have to add some yogurt to it? Mm, no. Okay, well this has to do with probiotics and this is something else I wanted to talk about before. Um, have you guys heard of probiotics? I'll write it here in the chat box. Oh, um, yes. Like acidophilus, uh, okay. other bacteria, have you heard of them? Yes, yes, it's, it's uh, very interesting and I read about that because it's uh, very important uh, uh, for my health. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, probiotics, but I can't eat. I I don't feel oh. well with probiotics. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll share my screen with you so you can see. Um, this is the the recipe. This is the link that I put in for the yogurt, and it gives some detailed instructions. Um, just in case you forget, like what we talked about before. So you can have that um, for the future. But there's also this really interesting article that I found about probiotics. And it says that they may aid against anxiety and memory problems. So do you know this word anxiety? Hi, uh, yes. Anxiety is when you are uh, very nervous or uh, suffer from depression, um, you are very, very excited about uh, sim simply things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're very worried about something and like... Yes, or oh, worry about uh, the future, <laughs> more <Yeah>. or less. <laughs> so, um, so probiotics, or the good bacteria that you find in, um, in yogurt, they help you to have a better memory and they help you to be calm and, and not be too worried. And so I'll give you also the, um, this is a nice um, science article from the Guardian magazine. And it just came out yesterday, this, this study. It was very interesting. But, yes, um, yes. but they say that, um, yeah, it just it helps with um, mild forms of anxiety and depression. It can help with many different things. So um, other things too. I I read about that, but in Spanish. Okay. Um, because my problem um, uh, have to um, have to to do with uh, all these kind of uh, things. Uh, our uh, bacteria in the stomach uh, feed uh, with um, uh, this kind of uh, probiotics uh, to improve uh, our health. Mm -hmm. uh, the allergies uh, have to do with um, with uh, bacteria in the stomach. Yeah, very good. Nice. And yes. so they have different types of probiotics here. These are different names of um, some probiotics or some healthy bacteria like lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. <laughs> so these are actually found in yogurt. And so that's why when you make your own yogurt, you need to add... Um, after you've heated the milk, you need to add a little bit of yogurt that you have from a previous, like that you've previously made. Because the yogurt that you've previously made has these live bacteria in them. And so, um, so that's what turns the milk actually into yogurt. So it's, it's a, such a cool process. It's really interesting and it has a lot of health benefits like you were saying, Anna. So. So yeah, so you guys can try to eat a lot of yogurt. <laughs> yes, and, and you, and you, I, re, I read digestive disorders health uh, <laughs> because, uh, as I was saying, uh, I read more about that <laughs> because it's interesting. Uh, I learned to to know uh, much better all my problems. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And and once you have a good understanding of how you can um, kind of feel better just by eating healthy foods, it's it's really nice. <laughs> yes. Try to be healthier. Okay, so something else I wanted to talk about today are these amazing cookies that were um, kind of created by the New York Times. You can see the, the symbol here for the New York Times, this famous newspaper. And um, so they had this search for the perfect cookie. And um, you can see this is the cookie that they finally came up with at the end. And um, we can read the story behind it because it's really interesting. Um, but first, before we read this, I wanted to ask you guys a little bit of vocabulary for um, for this recipe also to try to get something out of my my pot here. Okay, does anyone know the name of this in English? These? You guys know what these are called? Uh, yeah. Nueces. Nueces. I don't know, but uh, this uh, uh, the squirrel eat it. Okay. Like, uh, mm. like peanuts. I know. <laughs> like know peanuts, yeah. So they're a kind of nut. Very good. Um, these ones are actually called, yeah, very good. Nice job. So these are called walnuts. And um, you have to use this tool in the kitchen to open your walnuts because they're really hard. You cannot open them by yourself. So you have to use this special tool. And do you guys know what this tool is called? Oh, no. You like stick it in here and then you have to squish them. <laughs> yes, but I use I use um, um, metal triangle. Okay. A metal triangle, um, small with a sharp uh, point to okay. to hit to hit uh, on top of the the nuts. Okay, cool. So that's how you open your walnuts. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, um, a lot of people use um, so that might be another kind of of this kind of tool. Oh, so we have another student join us also, Marat. Hi, Marat. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice Where are you from? You. Uh, I'm from Turkey. Cool. Okay. Thanks for joining uh, us. Thank you very much. I am a new student in uh, Verbling. Okay. Cool. Well, we're talking about cooking today, so we're talking okay. about a lot of things from the kitchen. Um, okay. Marat, do you know the name of this tool? Uh, I don't know, but maybe uh, nut crack. Yes. Great nut job. Mm -hmm. Nut cracker. Yeah, nut uh, cracker. I'll put it here in the chat box. And so when you have hard nuts, like walnuts, you have to put them inside of the nutcracker and you squeeze it. I'm not really good at it, so I don't know. They don't have too many walnuts where I'm from. Okay, yeah, it opens. Okay. So you can see when you when you squeeze it, it, it opens. And um, I have some opened walnuts here. So this is what they look like, these specific kind of nuts. And, you know, there are so many kinds of nuts. There are almonds, macadamia nuts, peanuts, like Adnan mentioned. And um, so these are walnuts. These are, this is what walnuts look like when they're opened. They kind of look like little brains. Can you see hmm. <laughs> So the name of this one in English is walnut. Uh, do you guys have a favorite kind of nut? Anna, do you have a favorite kind of nut? Mm, uh, I I love it, but I I can't eat neither. <laughs> oh no! Are you allergic to nuts? Yes, it's uh, all all kind of um, I don't know how to how to, how is the name of this kind of uh, fruit? Um, yeah, nuts. In cereal or, or no frutos secos. Oh, okay. Frutos secos. Dry fruits. 
-hmm. Yes, but uh, they are um, they uh, they contain uh, many allergens. All oh. of them. All of them. Yes. Oh. And I I have stomachache. Uh, at the moment, I I eat uh, some of them. Oh wow. Okay. Yes. Well, maybe it's best to avoid them. Mm. That's sad though. Walnuts are very good for your health too. Like, if they didn't have allergens, I guess. I saw Vincenzo joined us too. Hi, Vincenzo. Hi, we can't hear you. Yeah, I think your microphone is not plugged in. Make sure your microphone's plugged in. Okay, I'm gonna ask Adnan too. Adnan, do you have a favorite kind of nut? Oh, it's it's hard to open them. Look here, it's opening. Ah. Adnan, do you have a favorite kind of nut? Yeah, but uh, mm, peanut. Usually, we use peanut in my country. Peanuts, okay. Peanut, the normal kind. Okay, and have you have you gotten walnuts like this before while they're still in the shell? Yeah, yeah, I get it. But uh, usually it's uh, uh, already open. They yeah. Sell it, they sell it uh, ready for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just started to open this one, and so it kind of looks like this once you start to open it. You can see the nut is right there, and then the shell is all around the outside. It's it's really cool. That where I grew I up like in Florida, they don't have these. Um, they don't have this kind of tree because it's tropical. But here, I live in Germany now, and they have them. So uh, these kinds of walnuts, they're very popular here. And let's ask Murat, too. Murat, do you have a favorite kind of nut? Do you like walnuts? Yeah. Or? Yes. Uh, my favorite uh, nuts is uh, hazelnut. Oh, hazelnuts. OK. Yeah. Also, we have a lot of uh, hazelnut garden in my hometown. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Okay. And hazelnuts are very famous because they use hazelnuts to make Nutella. <laughs> yes, Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it has that hazelnut flavor. Yes, okay. it, uh, can you hear me, teacher? Yeah, I can hear you. Welcome back, Vincenzo. Sure. So you have the same name, Nutella, like in Italy. Yeah, it's the same. All over N Nutella is famous in the whole world. Yes, but so. also in America, in the USA. Yes. Okay, uh -huh. Nutella. It's very famous. Mm -mm. So here we have our our partially opened walnuts. Yes, yes, yes. Because in Spain they call nocilla. No no mm -hmm. Oh, okay. They have a different name. Yeah. That's cool. All right, so um, I wanted to talk about these nuts because I actually added them to the recipe that we're going to look at, the New York Times recipe. And so you can use your, what is this called, you guys? You remember? <laughs> nutcracker. Nutcracker. Great job. A nutcracker. You can use your nutcracker to open your walnuts to get the shells off. All right, so I'm going to share my screen with you. You guys can see the recipe, or the first we'll look at the um, the article okay. that's talking about these special cookies. Oh, hold on just a moment. Yes, here it is. These are the perfect cookies from the New York Times. So we'll open these. Okay, I have to wait for the screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's going slowly. Vincenzo, do you have a favorite kind of nut? Yes. No. <laughs> and yes, that's a nut. Yes. Hazelnuts. Hazelnut, yes, it's good. I like hazelnut. Yes. But no one always teach. <laughs> Sometimes I have a blow. A, a certain amount of us and nuts, but uh, I don't eat them. So there, there was a period that uh, I like to eat as and nuts. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know. Maybe in winter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's cool. I really like hazelnut ice cream. 
gelato. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Okay, so I put the link here actually in the chat box because I'm having a problem sharing my screen. It's not yeah. working. Oh, wait, here. That was working. <laughs> um, so you guys can see this on the screen. Yeah. Um, and we'll read a little bit about um, this this writer from the New York Times. He wanted to find the perfect chocolate chip cookie. So, Anna, maybe I can ask you to read the first paragraph for us. Okay. <clears throat> uh, one day in, 19, in the 1930s, uh, Mrs. Uh, ah, uh, the, sorry, teacher. The letter is uh, very small. Can you okay. wait a spread? Uh, one day in the 1930s, uh, Mrs. Wakefield, an owner of the Toll House Inn in Whitman, um, Mass, uh, 23 miles south, uh, south of Boston, was busy baking in her kitchen. Uh, depending on which of the many legends uh, you describe to, the f fateful moment may have happened when a bar of Nestle, uh, I lost the screen, uh, oh, it's a bar of Nestle uh, semi-sweet se mm, semi uh, chocolate, yeah. wow, jitter uh, of a high shelf fell into an industrial mixer uh, below and shattered or when uh, Mrs. Uh, Wakefield in a brilliant move uh, to make her uh, butter drop do cookies a bit uh, sexier, sexier, shoved up a bar of chocolate and toast in the pieces. Or whether by accident or design, her tall house chocolate crunch cookies delighted her customers and became the culinary mother to an August uh, lineage that almost 80 years later is still multiplying and in, and in some cases uh, mutating. Nice reading. Good job. So this is talking about Mrs. Wakefield, and she supposedly invented chocolate chip cookies. And so these are chocolate chip cookies, of course. They're very famous. <laughs> um, yes. So that's, those are some stories about how she might have uh, created them. But let's, let's look on about how... Um, how the cookies are, are made, and maybe I can ask Adnan to continue for us, where it says made from. Well, made from nothing more than flour, eggs, sugar, leavening agents. Leavening agents. Mm -hmm. Leavening agents, salad, and chocolate. The cookies, some idiots proof. After all, it's simple enough that in it, in it, greater can make can make make it right. You can continue, continue here. Yeah, you can continue. Mm -hmm. Not necessary, necessary, necessarily. If it was just uh, a matter of a recipe, said Heifer Post. A picker in an honor of Alinda in Dumbo, Brooklyn. We'd all be out of business. It's what goes into the making of the cookie that makes that difference. Make them omelet, om omelet, omelet, mm -hmm. omelet which many believe to be the true taste of a chip. The humble chocolate chip cookies is the baker's crucible. Crucible. Mm -hmm. So few in, in, ingredients, ingredients, so many possibilities. 
for this, this disaster? What other explain, explanation can there be for the one virgins and unfortunate misinterpretations? Misinterpretations. Misinterpretations. Misinterpretations Very that good. have popped up everywhere. Eggless, sugarless, rendations, cookies, studied with car with carb, tof, tofu, and what is it? Marjo? Marijuana. Marijuana, whole weight, alter, alternative in the terribly misguided bacon to be variety. Variety. Mm -hmm. Good job. Variety. Nice reading. Yeah, I know there were some difficult words in there. Um, have you heard this expression, idiot proof, before? No, thank you. Okay. No. This is kind of an informal expression that every I think everyone knows what an idiot is, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's someone that doesn't it um doesn't really know how to do something is sometimes called an idiot. So something that is idiot proof is something that cannot be messed up even by an idiot, they say. So, um, so they say some um, some people say that cookies can't be messed up by anyone, but others, um, like this man, he said that the cookies have tried to, um, they've endured a lot of different ver um, variations, and some of the cookies turn out really badly. <laughs> so, um, but others, you know, they they might be good alternatives. Um, so maybe I can ask Murat if he could continue here where it says all this crossbreeding. Okay. Okay. All this crossbreeding begs the question. Has anyone trumped Mrs. Wakefield to find out a journey begun that included stop stops at some of New York City's best bakers as well as conversations with some doyens of baking? The result was a receipt for a consume made cookie. If you will, one built upon decades of accurate knowledge, experience and secrets, one that, quite frankly, would have Mrs. Wakefield drop shipping it at its altar. Okay, you can continue if you like. Okay. The first visit was to the city bakery on West uh, 18th Street, owned by Mary Rubin. Who seems to get as much pleasure from talking about food as from eating it? When asked about the secret to his cookies, he said, We bake them in small batches every hour to they are always fresh. He went on to say that the store sells more than 1,000 cookies a day. Okay, um, and maybe I can ask Vincenzo if he would like to... Um, continue reading here, where it says, why then? Yes, yes, um, yes, where is it? Why then, when, why then does almost everybody say they, they prefer homemade to bakery boat? Mr. Rubin smiled, having already figured, uh, figured out the answer. It's the warm, the warm rule, he said. Even a bad cook is straight from the oven as its appeal. It's a, a, an opinion expressed by every baker visited. Jack, Jack Torres, who has three branches uh, of his Jack Torres chocolate in Manhattan and Brooklyn, has a, a small warming tray set up near the register so customers can get their cookies soft and, and gooey. Gooey. Well, gooey, although he offers them at room temperature too. Uh, Seth Berkowitz, Berkowitz, the owner of Insomnia Cookies on East, on, on East 8th Street, 
goes so far as to have a display case filled with baskets spinning over with stand-in cookies. The real deals are sold straight from a, a holding oven. Either Sue Mercer, one of, th of three sisters who own Ru Ruby at, at Violet, which recently reop reopened on West 15th Street, believes that her bakery's basic chocolate chip cookie is definitely defin defin better warm. But she said, I think some of our others are better served room a better served room tempera temperature for the best flavor. A warming oven allows all the cookies to be served either way. Okay, nice reading. And I'll ask Anna maybe to continue. There are just two little paragraphs left here. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Hitler uh, Sue Mercer. Oh, okay, sorry, where is this given? <laughs> Ah, okay. Uh, given the opportunity to riff on his cookie making strategies, uh, Mr. Ruby uh, revealed two crucial elements home cooks uh, can immediately add to their arsenal of baking tricks. First, he said he lets the uh, dove rest though uh, rest for 36 uh, hours before baking asked why he struggled i don't know he said they just taste better nice reading good job anna and anna maybe you can tell us what dough is uh, is a uh, dough uh, yes is heart is like heart yeah, and and what is inside of the dough? What is it? Mm. I'm pulling up a picture here so we can see it. Okay. Um, but but yeah, usually it's when you mix all of the ingredients together. Oh. Okay. And and like you said, it's it's not a liquid, but it's it's a little bit more like these are all pictures of bread dough, but um. Dough is is much more um, firm <laughs> than um, than other mixes like that would be made with yeah. cakes. Uh, I I maybe I make a mistake because I confuse uh, this word with other uh, with other. Oh okay. Maybe. Okay. Well, here we can yes. pictures of cookies. Uh, this uh, this word uh, could mean like a donuts or something like that. Um, donuts are actually made from dough, and so okay. that's where they get their name. It used to be spelled like this. I'll spell it here for you, like this: donuts. Oh. But now it's spelled like this. At least in the United mm. States. So dough is like a mix of um, flour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, all of the ingredients mixed together. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, yes. I I make make a mistake with other words. No, but your explanation was good. I think. So, um, but yeah. So this one um, baker, he says to let the dough rest. So after you've mixed all of the ingredients together, he says to put it into the refrigerator for 36 hours. So this is for a day and a half before you bake them. And he says that they taste better. So this is one secret that the, the writer found while he interviewed all of these um, famous bakeries in New York. Excuse and, me, teacher. Uh, yeah, question. go ahead. It is uh, a question. <laughs> How is it called the substance that is put in the dough in order to raise? Uh, uh, um, okay. Well, they're usually called leavening agents. It's a, lev a levering. It's a levering ingredient. You know, what is it called? Leavening agents. Leavening and, agents. Yes. And there are different kinds of leavening agents. There is baking soda. Baking powder. Ah, baking powder. Yes, yes, I know. Oh, uh, yes. Sorry. Okay. Powder. And also, um, yeast, which um, 
yeast. That's Which it's is it's like a bacteria that causes it to rot. Yes, it's something solid, you know, little solid, gray, but, brown. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but you I just see. usually use yeast with um. I see this right. I see this right. Yeast, written. Yeast with cookies. Yeah. Right. So here we see this is the recipe that the writer found yeah. after he interviewed all yeah. of those famous bakeries and. Can I um, yes. Can I ask another question, teacher? And they were. Uh, how, is it, how is it? How is it called the, the instrument in order to to make this uh, dough plain? It's a wooden instrument, a cylinder wooden instrument that you oh, use. A it it pin. was a, an old this uh, yes instrument. Rolling pin. A uh, rolling a uh, rolling. Rolling pin, yeah. So you can pin. use to make uh, the dough flat. Okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah, rolling pin. Okay. All right. So um, yeah, I put the link to that recipe there, so maybe you guys can try to make those cookies. Um, and everyone, you guys can remember the name of the Nutcracker. Cracker, yes. The tablespoon and the teaspoon. So we'll try yes. to remember those words for next time. <laughs> yeah. I have to go because I have to start another class right now. But thank you guys so much for your participation, okay. and hopefully thank I'll see you soon again in another thank class. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. You, Take care. Yeah, Bye. you too. Bye, thank guys. You. Bye, teacher. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.